One, two, three, swing! Hey yo, what is up everybody? It's Pete Milton. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host here on the Redskins Review. Uh, no football this week for the Redskins. We have a bye week. Uh, this Monday we're going to be playing the Saints on Monday night. But in the meantime, I figured I'd bring you guys this footage. Uh, Chris Cooley was live on Facebook and I got to ask him a question. I asked him if the Redskins run game is the most important piece to the puzzle and this is a question I already know the answer to. I just wanted to hear his perspective and hear what he said. Um, I know that he was going to agree. Uh, this is something I've been saying on the channel for pretty much this entire year. Uh, if the Redskins run game does not show up, uh, we just do not have the offense that's gonna, going to keep carrying the team. And then the good defense that we're you know, surprised to see, our defense is not going to be able to win us all these games without this run game. Uh, we saw that in the loss to the Colts. As soon as we didn't get a run game, uh, it was downhill from there. So uh, check in on Chris Cooley's perspective on this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Question from Facebook. Ben Whiting hopping in. Is the Redskins run game the most important piece to the puzzle? Ben, that's an awesome question. And right now, I'm going to say that the answer is a, a resounding yes. Yes. For a few reasons. One, I think that you do have some speed with these receivers to get over the top, mm -hmm. but I think you need some action to get these receivers over the top. You do have the ability to get your tight ends and, and mix your backs the ball, but it, it's a lot easier if you make them put that extra guy in the box and decide that maybe they have to cover Jordan with mm -hmm. a safety or a linebacker. And, and then honestly, I don't want to put Alex into a little box and yeah. say that Alex Smith needs the run game, but Alex Smith has succeeded because of a run game. Exactly over the past five years of his career. When he has a run game, he has a successful offense. And that just makes it so much easier for a quarterback. And then finally, I'll say this. Look at what AP's doing right now. Exactly. Like, treasure it. Because what he's doing right now, we haven't seen We're from him back. We're honored to witness this. I, 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 there, are, there are plays in AP's game. There was, there was a play that was like a 38-yard run or a big run down the yeah, right sideline. Right side line. Like... I'm sitting here, Devontae, who's producing, sitting in here watching film with me yesterday. And Brandon Sheriff has a complete miss into the backfield. Complete miss. Boom. AP, downhill dive play. Yeah. He's got to bounce it. He is putting three cuts together, breaking a couple tackles, and he's down the sideline. And if you're a defense, you're saying, out. we had him. Yeah. We had him stopped. So now we had him stopped with what we had as a normal front. We yeah. have to make adjustments to be able to do that. Right. And AP is, AP is at a high point for us. So, yeah, I think the run game is, is very critical for this offense moving forward. That play, specifically, Adrian Peterson, 20.25 miles per hour, fastest ball carrier in the game Sunday. That was the top speed that he hit according to Next Gen Stats. And also, yards before there was a defender close, as you just mentioned, there was a whiff, negative 3.3 yards. So 3.3 wow. yards behind the line, Adrian Peterson met a defender, and he turned it into a 41-yard game. We'll get that play up a little bit later <laughs> yeah. in the show. I'll pop that play up. But the other thing... You have to be honest. Just going back to Ben's point, you have to be honest as a, as a defense, as a safety, with our run game. With AP running like that, it opens up shots downfield. And you saw the first touchdown of the game, Paul Richardson. The safety was cheating downfield because he, he had to respect that play-action pass. Sure. So that opens up big shots downfield, and it helps us out. So it all starts with the run game to answer Ben's question. The other thing about Adrian Peterson in this run game where I think this run game is different right now, is if I'm right, he had one negative carry on the day. Yeah. One. Like, it was in the second half of that game uh, on a stretch play, yeah. and it was the only negative carry. And that was AP running into Vernon Davis's back. But when you have Adrian Peterson just piling downhill, which he yeah. did. He hits the hole immediately. He hits the hole hard. He knows yeah. exactly what he's doing with the yeah. football. And it's a two-yard gain or a three-yard gain or a four-yard gain that doesn't look like much. Because we're sitting there calling that game and saying, well, it's, I mean, that's not much of a hole there, but yeah. it's he, second he, and seven. He makes second plays. and seven is a, a massive difference for a play caller, for yeah. an offense. It it's just changes dynamically what you're doing because second and seven, look, you have to get a couple yards right. to get yourself into a third and five, four manageable. Right. AP's doing that right now, and I think the run game is, is a huge key. He always finds a way to fall forward. That's one thing I really like about AP also. And, I mean, just being a vet, you learn that. It's just like, hey, whatever you do, fall forward, get that extra yard. And you see AP on one of his first downs last week, it was just he just reached the ball out. And it's like a lot of guys don't really think of that, but AP just being a season vet, knowing what he's doing, it helps. And, and a lot of the teammates pick up off of his energy. Here's your, here's your other next-gen stat. We'll call it a Cooley stat. <laughs> that big play we are talking about where AP hit 20 miles an hour. Yeah. He had eight yards at the end of that run carrying two Packer defenders. Eight. And he didn't fall. 
and it doesn't look like much when you're starting to add on to a 30-plus yard run, yeah. but eight yards is big in the NFL. That's almost first down in itself, exactly. just carrying two defenders. And I think the, the, the crazy thing is we're just talking about that one play. I'd love to see what his reacceleration was in between all three of his cuts yeah. because the first jump cut he makes in the backfield, I mean, he's hitting... He's hitting like 16 miles an hour before he makes his next cut, and he's hitting about 12 after the. Ne- I mean, his reacceleration is uh, and burst is really good right now. And so the one thing you you sit here and hope is, hey, look, can AP withstand 19 carries every single game? I I, I think through the first weeks it seems like you have no problem yeah. saying yes. And he gets a bye week to rest up. And he's just going to rejuvenate and rejuice himself though. Yeah, the sprained ankle. Jay Gruden announcing that on Monday in his press conference that AP does have a sprained ankle. Mm. But he expects him to be ready for New Orleans. Also, Trent Williams getting the small knee cleanup as well. He also expects him to be ready. Would be big. Yep. And those are some of the things that you do worry about with this offense is, is you know, who comes in a guard if we have anything else happening right. in guard. How fast can Sean LaBelle come back? Exactly. You know, we'll get to what, you know, what Spencer Long or what uh, Spencer Long, what Bergstrom was at, at center this week and what Ruye was at guard because I don't think Ruye is as good at guard as he has been at center. Now, that, that could change after a two- or three-week period. You know, mm-hmm. guys start to feel comfortable yeah. at a position. But, you know, you start talking about what happens if some of these guys go down. Yeah. What do you do if Trent and Morgan are out of the, yeah. out of the football game? I mean, Jerome like Christian, both, they haven't even wanted yeah, to well, make Morgan, active We yet. didn't mention Morgan. Yeah, those two right, guys. concussion yeah. for Morgan as well right. in that game. Just, now, I talked know. to Morgan, and he said he's, he, he's fine. I, yeah. I'm not sure if he's passed concussion protocol just yet, but he said well, yeah, he's fine. He looks like he's fine. And, and a lot of times, it's you get guys with concussions, you're, you're like, Ugh. Right. And Morgan looks like he's doing all right. Yeah, those two guys are – I feel like those two guys are irreplaceable. But, I mean, as season goes, as the season goes on, as we are able to, you know, get more chemistry, gain more, you know, knowledge, I feel like at the same time those guys will be able to come back and the whole team will get better. So if somebody gets injured, somebody else will step up because they have those reps and that, and that repetition. One of the most exciting things about this team to me is from top to bottom – you do actually have some more depth. I yeah. think there are a lot of young players that we all expect as a part of the Redskins to grow into roles that yeah. m- maybe are unknown to people in the mm-hmm. NFL. But for, for me, it's the first time that you don't have 20 C players on your team that aren't actually on the yeah. field, that if you have to put them on the field, you're saying, look, we have a couple A players, we have a bunch of B right. players, and we have, shoot, we got 20 C players. Mm-hmm. I think you cut that, that down to about eight or nine C players at the back end of this roster. And so that's something that you have as a real positive. Let's take a look at film breakdown and...